Okay, so I am on the phone right now with uh, primitive artist Kat McLean. Uh, you want to say hi, Kat? Hi, Kat. Yeah, perfect. All right. <laughs> um, so basically what we're doing is we're reviewing uh, your work, and we're taking a look at different uh, dead animals, and uh, it looks like a lot of roadkill or stuff that you find, and I, I get the feeling that a lot of people are probably pretty confused at, at first by what you do. Now, I've seen a lot of, of the final products of the things that you do. Um, I guess what I'd like you to talk about first is, you know, first off, what inspires you to do it, and how did you get started doing it? It's, it's always been something that I've done. I, I've always been drawn more to, to found objects when creating things rather than store-bought objects. And I, I just do it wherever I go. I go to the beach and I'm the person walking around with like arms full of seashells. And I, just, I spend a lot of time in the woods and it's, it was something that I'd gotten involved with uh, friends you know that had done it and you know we're out hanging out in the woods having a good time and you know there are a couple places up around here that there's just a lot of bones a lot of you know animals get hit and then when I started going to uh, East Strasburg University I had about a 45 minute commute down routes 380 and 80 from Moscow Pennsylvania to East Strasburg there's a lot of road kill on that yeah. road. <laughs> and so it kind of just turned into this this morbid habit of, I, I have a section on my iPhone under my notes of road kill, and I would mark down the mile markers where they were when I saw something that got hit, and I would just stop and check on it. Like, I, I can't tell you how many times I was late to class because I'm, like, walking around on the side of the highway checking on road kill <laughs> to see how it's rocking. <laughs> And it's just like, I think that's more than anything what confuses people. Like, you get a lot of confused looks when you're, you know, this, this skinny girl with dreadlocks flying everywhere and a bandana up around your face lurking around on the side of the highway. <laughs> like, it's just, so I don't know. <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of spiraled out of control from there. So what, um, what, um, I guess the question is, how, how do you envision creating something out of, bones or dead animals or anything like that like do you have do you have like do you have designs in mind already or is this something that just kind of comes organically mostly it's it's something that comes after i i have the bones after they're cleaned this might sound really lame but the bones kind of like speak to me i don't that's the best way i can think of to put it like i there are just certain bones that I've had and that I see and then it's, you know, something winds up coming where it's like, that is perfect for that. That's why I've, you know, kept that jawbone for six months or, you know, it just kind of happens. I mean, very rarely is it, you know, oh, I have this great idea for an art project. I need to find, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, it's, I mean, that kind of happens with the, the fashion show. Okay. Because it turned into, I need more rib bones. <laughs> Right. But, I mean, that was kind of like the first time that's ever happened. Wow. So the fashion show kind of happened by accident? That, <laughs> that pretty much happened um, because I, I, I worked some nights at the Sherman Theater and I ran into the person, um, Shane Izakowski, who's a fantastic person for the arts community around Stroudsburg. And he told me about the, the art show they were having with the fashion show and... I, I've always done sewing and, you know, clothing alterations and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, that'd be great. I should do that. And while I'm trying to roll around things in my head, I realize I'm completely fucking broke and I have no money to buy anything whatsoever. What do I have a bunch of in my house? Bones. <laughs> and so that's pretty much how that, I'm like, I'm going to make clothes on bones. And that, that turned into to something a lot more symbolic than it was because I, I describe that a lot as pretty much being my bone outfit because mm. people don't want to hear me go into a half an hour philosophical rant on what that outfit actually represents right but that outfit was um it's my tribute to the celtic cult of the deer goddess okay and pretty much a, a lot of tribal cults 
I, you know, I don't necessarily want to call them cults, but a lot of tribes in sacred ceremonies, you know, don deer skins and animal hides and animal bones to, you know, symbolize and, you know, bring down the powers of that animal. And that's, you know, it's, it's not a well-known thing or a well-studied thing, but there were cults of the deer goddess, um, you know, through ancient Celtic tribes. And that's kind of what that turned into. It turned into this, this whole kind of character after a while. And and to be clear for people who are watching you you actually you know from what i gather uh, from what i know of you you actually love nature you're not out slaughtering animals for for art or anything like that no god no all all of them are found they're, okay they're all found the only things that are not found bones or hides or anything like that that i'm working with right now are animals that you know has been killed for food okay on farms so that's that's the only thing and you know that's something that i've been working with you know with tom you know that that's going to be here uh, with powwow um you know and it's it's something that when i found out you know that that was something he was doing and i asked him what happens to the bones we had a, a very good conversation about, you know, our reverence for life and my feelings towards death. The first thing that he asked me was, you know, well, like, how do you feel about this? Like, what's your attitude towards, you know, life and death and everything? So it's, it's not a cavalier thing at all when it is something like that. And it's, I mean, even a lot of the roadkill that I find, the art that I make, it turns into more of a, a resurrection than wow. merely art pieces. I mean, especially with a lot of the roadkill. I remember this one time I had found, because a lot of times there's deer, there's porcupines, it's wild animals, but I had found there was a, a dog that had been hit on the highway, and I found its skeleton along um, Route 380. And it, it was, it was a, a sobering moment, because that was most likely someone's pet that wandered off, got lost, ran out of a car, and while it's sad and kind of morbid for me to be sitting there collecting a skeleton, if I didn't find him, no one may have. Right. And I don't know whose dog that was, but he's, he's getting new life through the work that I'm doing. And in that aspect, he will live on and he will always be remembered. Well, I think what you're doing is very interesting. It's very cool. It sounds like it's very in-depth. Um, how can people find you online, your, your Instagram, your Facebook? Um, the Facebook, it's Facebook, it's my personal Facebook right now, I'm, I'm in the process of, of trying to make this semi-professional, um, you know, trying to get this out into people is, is fairly new, it's really only been happening within the, about like the last four months, uh, but my Facebook, you can contact me at my personal one, it's Facebook slash cat, K-A-T dot McLean, M-C-L-A-N-E dot 90, and you can find me on Instagram at uh, Sagittal Crest which is, is it S-A-G-I-T-T-A-L, Crest, C-R-E-S-T. Um, and that's going to be the name of the, the line of, you know, primitive art and bone art that I'm doing. So that's a, a name to look out for. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much for this. It's been thank it's you. very cool. And uh, we are looking forward to talking to you more on the show. Great. I'm looking forward to getting there. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rick. All right.